All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Just a quick video. I just wanted to show you guys that we finally have an AM32 ESC on the market that is designed for crawling and is reasonably priced. So this is the Rhino ESC from AliExpress. And the other exciting part about that is that Jess over at Negative G decided to stock these in his store. Um, you know, this ESC came out, I think in around January, and it's on AliExpress. And basically, AliExpress is like a hub for Chinese manufacturers. So a product gets made, it gets thrown on AliExpress. And then typically, a US vendor would pick it up and stock it. And it's April, and nobody has done that. So, you know, I was talking to Jess, and I was like, you should just stock the ESC because nobody else has. And, you know, this is stuff that people need in the crawling world. So real quick, let's let's turn it on and see what it does. So that's a Team Broad Brood Riot 1600 KV. So if you guys aren't familiar with AM32 based ESCs, the first part of the throttle, in my case, the first 25% is what's called sign mode. And so sign mode is really slow. And what happens is in sign mode, if you're holding a steady throttle and you, you know, hit an obstacle, the ESC will recognize that you're still holding a steady throttle and it'll adjust the motor RPM to match your throttle so it never stalls. Just go nice and slow. So that's, that's what side mode is. And now mind you, a lot of people, when they get these at home and they like to test side mode, if you just drive in side mode for a long time, it'll generate a lot of heat in the ESC. Okay, so that's that side mode. And it basically, and you know, I made a video about this a few years ago, but it's, it's pretty much a cheater feature because it kind of eliminates the need for throttle control when you're crawling and if you get into a really technical spot um, that's pretty precarious and you have to modulate the throttle this gets rid of that and it does it for you but you know we're driving cheetah rigs this is my negative g cc v1 with cap axles you know might as well have a cheetah esc too <laughs> and then when you get past 25 percent throttle it switches to normal mode. Here, let me see if I can do it on the table. So, sign mode, and then that's normal. You can kind of hear it change. Okay, so let's talk about it. Now, when you get one, it's not going to look like this. I cut the shrink off and just desoldered the factory wiring. That's something that I always do because I like to wire my electronics to fit. So it's, you know, a direct connection to the motor. And then I, you know, make my power lead to length to where, it, you know, just reaches the battery and that gets rid of excess, you know, it drops weight and it just looks cleaner. But now keep in mind, these come with a six month warranty. And I'm assuming if you cut the shrink off, that it voids that. So just, just keep that in mind. That would be my guess. If you start messing with the solder, the factory solder, you're probably going to void the warranty. So just keep that in mind. I don't personally care because ESCs are pretty simple devices and they're pretty hard to mess up. You know, like China has been making these specific types of ESCs for 20 years. So it's, it's at this point, it's pretty hard to get wrong. Now, one thing you'll notice is that 
it's pretty beefy compared to the other silent ESCs you might see in the market. It's, it does have a heat sink on it. And if you take off all the wiring, it weighs about 34 grams. And then just for comparison, this is the Wraith 32. You can't see it. So this right here is a Castlebeck and then the ESC is on the other side. And it's it's like five grams. That's a, that's a drone ESC. I did sell a batch of those Wraith 32s or a couple of batches for about $75, I think, which I didn't even feel good about doing that because the ESCs themselves cost like $16. But just for comparison, that's the size of a typical silent ESC that you might see available like on Facebook. So it is a little bigger, but the upside is that it's bigger because it's specifically designed for crawling. So it's a lot beefier. Um, it's gonna be able to handle sign mode a lot better than a drone you see. And I have this working theory that when it switches from sign mode to normal mode, this particular ESC is pushing more current than a drone ESC because I'm able to run my startup power lower on this ESC. And you'll see when you get the configurator installed on your computer, you know, the startup power is set to 100 and it can go up to 150. And with the, the drone ESCs, you know, in some cases you're okay at 100, in some cases you have to turn it up all the way to 100, 150. Because what happens is if that startup power is too low, when it switches from sign mode to normal mode, it'll start, the motor will start stuttering really bad. But with this Rhino on my, on this chassis, I've got it turned down to 80 <laughs> and it's, it's still pushing the motor, the motor harder than it did with the Wraith 32 drone you see. Okay, so now let's talk about the cost. So on AliExpress, these are $70. On Negative GRC, they're $70 plus shipping. You know, standard USPS shipping. Now, that is a huge deal because the only other silent ESCs on the market are the Crawlmaster V2, which is pretty expensive. And then you have a bunch of different, like, individuals selling silent ESCs. But again, all of those, aside from the Crawlmaster, those are all drone ESCs. And they're selling for, like, anywhere from $120 to $150 or $60, which... And I, and I know people are, you know, capitalizing and, you know, filling a need. But it's insane. Because... You're paying $120 for a drone ESC that costs anywhere from $15 to $30. You know, there's some wiring and programming involved, but not that's worth $100 plus. That's just insane. So I'm really glad that there's this Rhino ESC out now because it's reasonably priced. And... This is actually made by a company called DYS out of China. Um, I've worked with them a lot in the past through drone racing. DYS is a huge manufacturer of ESCs. And they have been, like I said, for decades. So, you know, this is a company that knows what they're doing. It's not a repurposed drone ESC. This is an, an ESC designed for AM32 for crawling. Okay. I guess the only con is that it weighs 35 grams. But if you're someone that historically uses Castle ESCs, then that's still, you know, quite a big weight savings. Some other nice features about it, it does come with a power button. Uh, you know, one press to turn on and then long press to turn off. And it also, it's on the underside, you can't see it. It comes with a 10 amp, 8.2 volt Beck. So, like this truck on my Class 1 truck, because I'm not running a direct powered servo, I have a Castlebeck 
and that's an extra, you know, that's extra weight. And that's like, they're like what, 15 or $20. So if you're not running direct powered servos, you basically just have to wire in the ESC and you're good to go. You don't have to mess with the Beck. You don't have to mess with the, the power wires. So it just makes for like a really clean install. If you're not using a direct powered servo it is rated up to 8s <laughs> and 80 amps the amp rating is is uh arbitrary it doesn't really matter in this case because crawlers don't pull any current at all i made a video about that that i'll link in the description but they pull like 10 amps peak so, so the amp rating of an ESC is totally negligible, and you can ignore that when you're talking about, you know, LCG crawlers. All right, guys. Um, something I forgot to mention. These do come with the USB linker to connect to the software. So I'm just going to hook it up really quick and just show you how it connects. It's this piece. So USB-C just plugs into the, I think the signal wire goes to this side. And then we're gonna come over here and plug it into the laptop. Okay. So this is the configuration tool, that's annoying. Hopefully it's plugged in correctly. So you want to hit direct connect and then select your COM port, connect, and then click motor one. Ah, oh, didn't work. Okay, so it must be plugged in backwards. Okay, we'll try that. Sometimes I have to, once I, if I fiddle with that part, I have to unplug the USB and then plug it back in. Okay, and then we come back over here. Still on COM port 10. Wait, let me close this. Connect. Motor one. Okay, so yeah, it's not super tricky. Um, when you get these, make sure you disable stuck rotor protection. I don't know why they have that enabled, but what that'll do is if the ESC senses that the motor is under super heavy load, it'll cut power, so turn that off. And then turn on stall protection, because that does the opposite. It, if, if it senses that the rotor is gonna stop spinning, it pushes more current. Sign startup range, I always like to turn that up to 25 because it gives me, you know, that nice uh, chunk of RPM lock at the beginning, the sign mode. And then this is the startup power that I mentioned. You'll want to play with that. If you have a smaller motor, like a snub nose or a Riot SS, you'll probably need higher startup power. But in this case, I have a big motor, so I can use less. And the reason why you would want to use less startup power is because it's smoother when it switches from sign to normal. I think that's about it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this quick video on the Rhino ESC available at negativegrc.com. If you guys have any uh, questions or concerns, leave them in the comments. All right, thanks for watching.